So we're at Crystal Palace here looking at some of the dinosaur models. These are fantastically important on a, an international scale because this was the first time anybody had tried to visualize what dinosaurs looked like. They may look sort of quaint to us because they're a mid-Victorian image of, of what people thought at the time, but they were carefully based on the available evidence. They were the idea of um, Sir Richard Owen, who was one of the leading natural scientists of the time, professor, expert in paleontology. He had studied many of the early dinosaurs. And it was at the time of the Great Exhibition in 1851 that the idea emerged of making a permanent home for the wonderful glass palace, which was showing the marvels of um, technology and science and industry. But his passion was the fossils, and he wanted to show the dinosaurs and the marine reptiles and all the other creatures. And he thought, what better than making them full size, which was a scary concept. They had to be built of concrete, and the artist who built them was Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins. And I don't think he had ever had a commission like this before in his life, because together, the rather dour professor, together with this um, showman artist, had to come up with images that were satisfactory in terms of scientific accuracy, but that would be exciting and impressive for the visitor. Owen worked with the best information he had available, so although they look very strange to us today, in fact some of the dinosaurs look more like strange rhinoceroses or something like that, he had a, a strong view that dinosaurs were actually, although they were reptiles, he, thought, he was fairly clear they were quite advanced in certain ways. And amazingly, he even thought they were warm-blooded. And so partly for the wrong reasons, partly for the right reasons, he wanted to show them looking something like mammals. And you might think, well, how on earth could he get it so wrong? But back then, in the 1840s and 1850s, he did not have any complete skeletons. So he had just partial bits of bones, leg bones, isolated teeth, a few jaw bones, and he did his best fitting them together. It's worth remembering they were set up five or six years before Darwin's Origin of Species, the book from 1859 that many people regard as the seminal or key work in all of the um, biological sciences. The correct position now would not be to laugh at Owen and Hawkins because they were doing their best. And of course, if we were to laugh at them and say, oh, they were very silly, they got it wrong. Well, what will people say in a hundred years time about our current um, uh, images of dinosaurs? The Crystal Palace dinosaurs have been seen by millions of people. They're in a public park in South London. People walk past and see them. Kids love them. And you can get up close from time to time. But they're, they're, they're in need of care. People might think big concrete monsters, nobody cares, they'll last forever. Absolutely not. Bits fall off, they naturally decay. And it's important to remember in their early days they were brightly painted. And over the years they have been cleaned and repainted, but that paint doesn't last very long. So the Friends of the Crystal Palace Dinosaurs is a wonderful and charitable organization. They have been around for a long time looking after the dinosaurs, negotiating with the local authorities, raising heritage funds and relying on the general public. So it's a fantastic job they do and their, their work is needed and we need the dinosaurs to survive another century or two. I'll say my favorite dinosaur is Iguanodon. We can see him in the background. He's got a nice new coat of paint. I like Iguanodon because uh, it, it was a very important dinosaur in the early Cretaceous, uh, present we now know in huge herds over much of Europe. And so clearly very well adapted, very, uh, uh, yeah, a very, just a, a good archetype of a great dinosaur. And in the history of dinosaurs, of course, it was the second one ever named and it's got that wonderful horn on its nose and we just love that story of the revision of scientific uh, knowledge so we know that that's not a horn on its nose but I won't say what it is.